When we studied polynomials, we defined the degree of a polynomial as the highest power of its variable. Then we also studied linear equations in two variables and we saw how they were equations with their degree as 1, but the number of variables were 2. Now look at these equations. The first equation is x plus 2 is equal to 0. Can you tell me what its degree is? If we see here, the variable is x and its highest power is 1, which means that this equation has a degree as 1 and such equations are called linear equations. Next, look at the second equation, which is x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Again, the variable in this equation is x and its highest power is 2, which means that the degree of this equation is also 2. An equation with its degree as 2 is known as a quadratic equation. And finally, the third equation is x cubed plus 3x square plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. Here the variable x has its highest power as 3 and so the degree of the equation is 3. Now can you recall what an equation with its degree as 3 is called? You're right. Such an equation is called a cubic equation. So you see the classification of the equations based on their degree is very simple to how polynomials are classified based on their degrees. Which is why, like we have linear, quadratic and cubic polynomials, we also have linear, quadratic and cubic equations with degrees as 1, 2 and 3 respectively. In this chapter, however, we will pay special attention to the equations having their degrees as 2, that are the quadratic equations. Let's say we are given the quadratic equation x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Let's put x is equal to 2 in this equation. So our LHS that is x square minus 5x plus 6 will be 2 square minus 5 into 2 plus 6. On simplifying we will get the LHS as 4 minus 10 plus 6 that is 10 minus 10 which gives us 0. And so at x is equal to 2, we get the LHS as 0 and our RHS is also 0. So we conclude that 2 is the root of the given quadratic equation. Also if we take x equal to 3 in our LHS, it will become 3 square minus 5 into 3 plus 6 which gives us 9 minus 15 plus 6 that is 15 minus 15 which is equal to 0. So at x is equal to 3 we get the LHS as 0 and our RHS is also 0. Therefore 3 is also a root of the given quadratic equation. Now let's look at this from a graphical point of view. Now when we studied polynomials we say how quadratic polynomials can be represented graphically also. Do you remember the shape of the graph of a quadratic polynomial? That's right, it was a parabola. Similarly, even quadratic equations are represented by parabolas. For example, this is the graph of the quadratic equation x square minus 5x plus 6. If you look here, you will see that the graph is an upward parabola that cuts the x-axis at two points. What did we learn about the graph of a quadratic polynomial cutting the x-axis at two points? That's right, it will have two zeros, which means that this quadratic equation has two values of x at which the value of the polynomial at the LHS of the equation is zero. So this equation has two roots and we just found two values of x that were satisfying the equation. There were two and three. So in the graph, we see that the parabola cuts the x-axis at x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. Again, if you remember, we saw how quadratic polynomials could either have two zeros, one zero or no zero at all. Similarly, even a quadratic equation can have at the most two roots. And with that, we now know the number of roots that a quadratic equation can have. In the previous example, 
when we considered the quadratic equation x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0, we found out its roots at x is equal to 2 and at x is equal to 3 by trial and error method. At the same time, if we were to plot the graph of a quadratic equation, we could observe the points where it cuts the x-axis or the point where it touches the x-axis to find the root of the equation. However, if both of these methods are not very feasible because trial and error can get lengthy and tricky, especially if the roots aren't integers. At the same time, we can't always plot the graph of the equation to find the roots because it becomes tedious and well, we might not always have a graph sheet with us, right? So there has to be a theoretical way to find the roots of a quadratic equation, right? So there is. In fact, there are more than one ways to find the roots of a quadratic equation and the first one that we learn is the factorization method. Oh, does that sound familiar? We did so many problems on factorization when we studied polynomials, remember? And that's exactly the way we factorize a quadratic equation too. So let's learn to find the roots of a quadratic equation by the factorization method. First, we write down the given equation in the general form, that is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. That is the square term is the first term and the constant term is the last term. That is we'll write it as x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now if we compare our equations with the general equation, we will get a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 5 and c is equal to 6. Next we find the product of the coefficient of x square that is a and the constant term that is c. Here we have a is equal to 1 into 6 which is equal to 6. Now we'll factorize 6. We have the factors of 6 as 1 into 6 and 2 into 3. While the negative factors are minus 1 into minus 6 and minus 2 into minus 3, we have to choose a pair of factors such that their sum is equal to the coefficient of the middle term that is minus 5. If we consider the pair of factors as minus 2 and minus 3, we get minus 2 minus 3 is equal to minus 5, which is the coefficient of the middle term. Now at the same time, minus 2 into minus 3 is also equal to plus 6, correct? So now we will split the middle term minus 5x into minus 3x minus 2x and rewrite the equation as x square minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now taking x as a common factor from first two terms, we will have x multiplied by in the bracket x minus 3 and then taking minus 2 common from the next two terms, we will have minus 2 into in the bracket x minus 3 is equal to 0. If we look here, we see that the term x minus 3 is common throughout the LHS of the equation. So we will take x minus 3 as common, the first bracket and we will get the second bracket as x minus 2 and the RHS will be equal to 0. Since the RHS is 0 and we have to ensure that the LHS is equal to the RHS for the equation to hold true, we will equate the two factors that are x minus 3 and x minus 2 to 0. When we equate x minus 3 to 0, we get x equal to 3 and we will equate x minus 2 to 0 and we get x is equal to 2. And we know that x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3 are both roots of the equation. Therefore, we have solved the quadratic equation by equating the factors to 0. Here's the deal with factorization. It requires you to manipulate the terms in such a way that you're able to get common factors throughout the polynomial. And that only comes with practice. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.